Well guys, if you guys saw the last video, you would know that this cylinder head is hurt. We're going to start with removing the exhaust stud that got broken off in the cylinder head before we do any porting and polishing for the simple fact that we might waste our times here. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this drilled out first and then go from there. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Compact Garage. If you haven't seen the first video on this Predator 420cc, I highly recommend you pause this video right here, go back and watch that video to get up to speed with what's going on with this cylinder head. So in today's video, we're going to remove that exhaust stud, which is stainless, might I add, which is why I have all these beautiful drill bits. Say goodbye, they're getting smoked. And then we can see if we can tap that out and I want to start with this first to see if I can even drill this to find out if it's, if it's even worth fixing this cylinder head. This is going to be a fun one, so stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and start by trying to drill this out. One thing to add before we carry on, I did try to weld a nut to this exhaust stud. It is trying to pull the threads out of the aluminum. It's almost acting like it's cross-threaded. I cannot drill it and put an easy out through it. It will not come out without breaking that easy out. I had a nut welded on here very good, and it just broke this stud even further down before it even attempted to remove it. I have put heat to it, and I still had no success. I've tried penetrating oil. I've tried a lot of stuff to get this out, and the only solution that I've come to is we will have to drill this and tap it, or drill it and put a helicoil in. Another thing is, you guys might be wondering, is this even worth doing? You can pick up CNC ported 420 cc cylinder heads on online all day long but they come at a heavy price so i'm wondering if i can fix this cylinder head and save myself the money with just a little bit of elbow grease so violent baby so after wasting entirely way too much on that the casualty count is two broken drill bits okay there's got to be three actually because there's three heads to drill bits anyhow I broke one of these off down inside the hole forcing me to resort back to my old plan of drilling it and then welding a nut on it so with not a whole lot of material left inside the hole. It was able to collapse down on itself. I was able to weld a nut on it, therefore extracting it. So the cost was a couple drill bits. Uh, that stainless steel is extremely tough. So with that stud out of there, I'm going to go ahead and chase those threads with a tap to clean them up and then move on to the cylinder head porting itself. So there you have it. The top is where our broken stud was. It is drilled and tapped back out to the original size. It looks perfect. But our main goal is to just blend this into the valve seat, essentially creating a smooth transition across. And then we will open up these ports, both the exhaust and the intake. 
The biggest thing is cleaning off these sharp edges inside the cylinder head so that we can see the whole way down there and it's just a smooth, you know, transition. Might be able to see it a little bit better here on the intake side, but these are some sharp edges as they're coming in here. So if we can blend all of this out here and kind of open those up, it'll create a better flow to the cylinder head. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set you guys up a little bit better here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my die grinder with a carbide bit. Okay, for those of you guys who have trust issues, well, let's just rewind a minute and talk about earlier in this video, I said we weren't going to go too big on this. We were just going to do it a little bit at a time. Well, I lied. I got carried away and I didn't mess it up. But as you can see, we have a mess here. So we are complete with only one side. That is right. All of this came just out of the exhaust port. We opened this thing up big time. I still have a ton of sanding to do inside there to smooth it all out. But I am just running through sandpaper. I'm exhausted, I'm tired. But if I had a Dremel tool, this would go so much faster. You guys have no idea. I You can see a couple little like uh, spots in there where it has not uh, been smoothed yet uh, but I'm working that out with the sandpaper it it looked like that the whole way through this but uh, I mean there's a huge difference here's the intake side you can see how narrow that is and how much we have opened that up uh, it's incredible what you can do with some elbow grease It is incredible the shine you can get. That is absolutely insane. There's the exhaust valve. So that's the exhaust side. And here's the intake side, which we have not done. Huge difference. It is unbelievably smooth. My hands look like trash. It is so unbelievably smooth. It's incredible. But I'm going to go ahead and keep working this with the sandpaper. It's a lot of what you guys have already seen. After I'm done with that, I will move on to the intake valve, but it is literally the same exact thing that you guys saw here me do on the exhaust. 
you could pick up a Dremel tool online for, I don't know, 20 bucks off of Amazon probably. Uh, you could put some time into a cylinder head. You could remove the valves. You go ahead and pour it out. You could polish it. Um, you could do all of that for $20 and a few hours of your time. Or you can go buy a couple hundred dollar cylinder head. I have a little bit more time in this because I went ahead and removed that exhaust stud that you guys saw me break off in this hole here. Um, and then I had to go ahead and re-tap it. So I do have a little bit more time in this cylinder head. I'm probably in it between this uh, exhaust port and the stud. I'm close to probably two and a half hours at this point. Now, I spent a tremendous amount of time on that stud because it was stainless steel. It came at the cost of some drill bits. I will put anti-seize on those stainless steel studs whenever they go in in hopes that they will not seize in the cylinder head again. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to stay tuned for this engine build, this budget engine build, and whenever I say budget, I mean less than $500. We are trying to squeeze as much power as we can out of a Predator 420 Hemi for under $500. I'm hoping to see at least 25 horsepower for it. And as promised, guys, I'm about to bring you over and show you the project what this engine's going on so you understand why we need the power and why I'm going through all this work. So please disregard the mess of what I call my garage. But this is a Carter's Bro 250cc interceptor. However, it is heavily modified. I have Mojave front suspension on both sides A-arms with the shocks I do have air shocks on the way for that because it is loose in the front end at this time. I have a Ranger 570 steering rack in there. I'm going to put dual seats with four point harnesses in this and I'm going to add some more bracing for the roll cage itself. In the rear, we have an RZR suspension, upper and lower control arms with the spindles and the brake calipers. This took a lot of work. That bar is where the shock will go. I knew the measurements of the shock from eye to eye thanks to the uh, listing. However, I did not have time for the shocks to arrive and I wanted to go ahead and make the shock mount. Uh, so I went ahead and fabricated that ahead of time. I just drilled a piece of pipe center to center eye to eye to set my ride height where I wanted it in the rear knowing that I could always adjust it later because they are a coil over design. If you guys want to see more of this project, um, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you guys want to see me finish this thing out, uh, otherwise I will just, you know, work on it whenever I can here and there in between videos and projects and weather and whatnot. But until then guys, keep on wrenching.